What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Forever Stranded Lost Souls. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, uh, we set up our furnace over here and we set up some things. And yeah, currently I'm just pouring out the rest of our molten iron. I've been doing a little bit of mining around the base, trying to get the floors installed everywhere. And like these back three rooms back here, and I think the side two rooms over there did not have flooring installed. So yeah, I went through and I got that all set up. So we have a nice clean floor around here. Again, the wall still <laughs> needs some attention, but that's going to be a lot of work and a lot of mining. Um, I did set up some more of our sieves over here. Just kind of laid out all of our different meshes. Just trying to get things laid out appropriately in the base, putting things where I think they should go and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I did also take out our enchantment table and our anvil and our bookshelves and I put that stuff over here. I kind of walled off our smeltery and our furnace area trying to make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, what else did I do? I guess I put the the resonator and our manual mill over here. Yeah, so I think we're doing pretty good today. Now I wanted to start taking a look at some of the quests that are available in our quest book, right? So we've already done all the quests up to tinkering. Getting foods was the next section that we haven't completed yet. And I kind of feel like we should get it done. If I don't do it now, I'm going to leave it to for last. And it's going to be like, why even bother? Um, so one of the things that I see right here is the marketplace is one of the things that it wants us to get, which is locked out by the presser. But yeah, like trying to get a lot of different foods in this mod pack, probably going to want to use tofu for, which requires a presser, which means we need soybeans, which means we're probably going to need to get the marketplace. Anyway, so let's do the presser. So the presser requires us to have two pistons and six iron that is pretty easy for us to do we already have the pistons from rewards we have iron right here let's go ahead and make one of these bad boys there we go so the presser should allow us to take the soybean put it through here and then i guess we get either the soy milk or the the soft tofu or whatever and then we put the tofu back through again and then we get the hardened tofu which we can use in place of meat that's how this thing has worked in the past. It's gone through a few different changes. I think in one of the packs I played, you had to put the soy milk back in to turn into the, the soft tofu. Anyway, so that's what the interface looks like. You should be able to pipe things in and pipe things out. And it does have two slots. Yep. Anyway, uh, so let's see what we can do now in the quest book. So that's going to give us a loot chest. It says press them logs for paper. Really? So it wanted us to use this thing to make paper. Okay, let's take a look at this presser. If we go to the uses of that, does it show us? Hmm. Maybe if we search for paper? I did not realize that we could use <laughs> the presser to get paper. I'm not seeing it in here. Huh. Yeah, I don't see the presser even listed. Okay, well, let's try putting a log in there. If that's a thing that we can do, let's see how that works. So if we put a log in here. Oh, yeah, sure enough, it is doing a thing. Okay, that's kind of cool. And that gives us two paper. All right, well, had I known that, we might not have set up the paper tree over here. But you know what? This paper tree is still doing work, and I like what it's doing here. We are just always getting paper. We don't have to worry about it. So I don't know. Either way, I think it's fine. Um, that paper, though, we're just actually, you know what? I forgot. We have a trash can, don't we? Or a trash chest. I will put that in the trash chest because <laughs> we don't need it. All right, let's go ahead and open our loot chest here. Oh, magic beans, lesser magic bean, bean, soybean, and baked beans. Really? It just gave us a soybean that we were just talking about a moment ago. Okay. Well, that's fine. You know what? Let's grab ourselves another chest here, uh, right in here. We'll head over into our section over this side that has our garden cloche because we're going to want to put the soybean in here. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is completely full of sugar cane and this is 100% full of sugar cane. So what we need to do is put a chest over here, I guess. I don't know where we're going to keep this. But I will start removing the sugar cane, putting it in there. Let's turn this thing off so it doesn't make any extras. We're already going to have four stacks more than what I can fit in anything. I believe, right? Shouldn't we have another stack right there? Okay, four stacks. 
plus three. <laughs> All right, so let's put the sugar. Oh, I need a piece of dirt. Uh, do I have one in here? I do. So yeah, we need to put the soybean in here and then we'll start growing some soybeans. So there's some dirt. There's our one soybean and yeah, that's growing. It's not growing super fast, but then again, the sugar cane didn't go super fast either. I am curious though, are we going to get one or three soybeans per harvest? And how long does that take? I guess about 30 seconds. Ah, we got three of them. Okay. So let's, and it does give us a seed as well. That's cool. Let's go check out the soybean in the presser since we just got done making it. And that is mostly the intended use for the presser. I do believe. All right. So if we put one soybean in here, yeah, it is doing its work again. This machine doesn't even need power. So it's nice. So what do we get? Okay. So we get silken tofu plus grain bait. Interesting. So I assume the silken tofu will give us soy milk and the firm tofu. Is that how this works? Yeah, soy milk, which is a milk replacement. It is also food. You can eat it directly. And then firm tofu. Now this has like a crazy, a crazy amount of recipes. You can put it in. All of them should be really saturating. In fact, I am looking at these and I am completely wrong so far. Uh, looks like everything those are used for is garbage food. Why is that? I wonder. Wow. Uh, Mismo or Mismo soup is the only thing that looks like it's worth using it in. Man, that is really terrible. Like you can eat the firm tofu <laughs> and get better food than crafting it with other things. Are you serious? Is that, yeah, each one of those is half a haunch and half a, a hunger. Wow. Unless that tool tip is wrong. That's really bad. Eating it just by itself is better. Wow. Okay. And then the soy milk, the uses for that, we can... Put that into Yorkshire pudding, apparently, which seems like a really good food. Salt, batter, stock, and soy milk. That's really not that bad. Hmm. A few different recipes here. Yeah, in previous mod packs, when we had the tofu, we were able to turn those into hamburgers. I wonder what the recipe is for this. It looks like raw beef, raw tofu steak. And the steak... Oh, maybe that's one of the things that we just were looking at the recipe for. Uh, maybe they did change it a little bit. They, they made it so it's not as overpowered as it used to be. So a hamburger comes from one of those steaks plus a toast in a skillet. And that's a pretty good food source. And that requires a mushroom, cooking oil, soy sauce, and black pepper. Yeah, uh, I feel like the donut, the powdered donuts that we're making are just the easiest thing. You don't really have to worry about them. And all of that, so yeah, I don't think I don't think we're gonna be doing the whole soybean thing, unfortunately. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that we'd be able to make some stuff here. Now the baked beans looks like a pretty decent recipe, and then we can also use I think the magic bean. Um is it daytime? It is daytime. Let's go see if we can use a magic bean outside since we got one of those as a reward, see what we can do with this. I do believe the magic bean. Did I show you guys I put an iron door here with buttons? I put an iron door there with buttons. I do believe the magic bean, you can plant it on the ground. It makes a stock that goes all the way up to the build limit or pretty close. It puts a chest up there. Let me get rid of some of this grass here. Get rid of you, you. Okay. So let's try putting the magic bean here. Yeah, that's really neat. I like how that works. And the last time I used one of these things, when you plant it like that, it shoots you way up in the sky really fast. So let's see if that still is a thing. Looks like it. Can you press shift to stop? Yeah. Okay. You can press shift to stop and we go all the way up here. Okay. And then we have a bean pod at the very top. So let's pop this thing. The last time I've used, oh, it says an ax. I don't have one on me. The last time I popped one of these, it can contain like diamonds and gold. I think maybe gold blocks. There's a lot of neat stuff you can do with it. And I think I'm going to leave the beanstalk here. Yeah, what do we get? We got diamond, emerald, some gold. I think I'm going to leave the beanstalk here. So when we want to go away from the base, we can grab our hang glider, right? And just uh, 
have an easy way to get up without having to do anything else. Looks like we can even land on these clouds. I don't know if these clouds are bad or not. I haven't even seen one of these yet. Nope, you just fall right through them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've seen that there are darker rain clouds. I don't know if that does anything for us. Oh man, there's a lot of weird stuff nearby. Okay, where's our base? Let's get back there real quick. Yeah, let's just get back to the base. So that's pretty cool. The beanstalk, um, yeah, you can get stuff out of it. And then it is a fast way to get up high in the sky. So if you do have a hang glider or whatever, yep, you can get around really easily without having to use like your slingshot like I've been doing or building a pillar up there. And also I think you can break the bottom, the bottom block of the stock and it'll break all the way up. So yeah, if we decide we don't want it later, we can always get rid of it pretty quickly. So yeah, that's nice. Okay, let's put these things away. Okay, so let's move on. Now that we did the presser and <laughs> we checked out some of the tofu and all of this kind of stuff. Uh, going to market is the next one it wants us to do. It says the market allows you to trade in emeralds for crops and saplings. Okay, so let's look at a market. Uh, this guy, oh, this is locked out. This wants us to go to the Twilight Forest before we can do this. Uh-huh. Hold the mom in stasis. Throw to release the captured mob. I don't know what an instabulation apparatus is. This is a new, oh, this is an augment. Okay. Allows for the processing of morbs. Morbs will provide items from the contained mobs. Okay, so I guess this will probably want us to capture something and run it through this from the twilight, which we'd already have to go to to find these torch berries. So I don't think that's a thing that we're going to be doing just at the moment. Tofu wants us to, oh, we didn't grab the silken tofu. So we can do that right now. We have an extra soybean. In fact, I'll just put both of those in there. Just let it process. So we need one silken tofu in our inventory to complete that portion. And there it is. <laughs> I was like, is it going to complete? Okay, so it's there. And we get a little bit of the green beet back. Okay, so now that we completed that one, it says instead of making a passive mob farm, you could grow soybeans, turn them into tofu, and use that instead of meat in most recipes. This is true, but as we saw before, the recipes aren't that great. Mm, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe making the oil and getting the pepper and all that stuff is fine. And most people are okay with that. Me, meh. I think the powdered donuts are going to suit our needs. Uh, so let's claim this. And we get an iron battle axe from Tiny Progressions. That is how much? 12 attack damage. And a diamond pickaxe from Primal Core. 12 attack damage. That is more than our sword. Is this thing really slow? Like when you use it? Ugh. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty slow. I think we'll stick with our sword. That way we don't have to worry about item durability and these kinds of things. I'll just keep all that stuff in this chest here. Very good. Okay, so um, I did see that we had other worlds. In order to do this, we are going to have to go to the Twilight Forest. So if we look here and we go to this, it says to enter the Twilight Forest, you're going to need to make a two by two block of water, surround it with grass, put flowers on the grass around the water, throw a flux crystal in the water and jump in. Hmm. Now we could go to the Twilight Forest right now. My main concern about that though, is our difficulty 171. <laughs> Um, this might be a time if we do decide to do that, that I should switch over to our shell here, our sync mod, other me. If we do die, then we will just be teleported back here and not lose a life. That seems like something we might want to do. Now, again, I don't know if we die in another world, if all of our stuff goes into some kind of a gravestone or if we just lose it. Yeah, this is stuff that I don't know. But uh, I would think I'd rather remake our stuff and have an extra life than, you know, lose a life and not be able to continue the world. So I think what I'm going to do, let me clear up my inventory. I'll take off all my armor. We'll swap over into our, our sink body here. We'll re-equip and then we will look at trying to go to the Twilight Forest.
All right, guys, so I'm in my sink body now. It doesn't look like we're getting all the health back. It's not regenerating. I don't know if that's a visual glitch or whatever, but yeah, I took our sink body from over there, and our regular body is over there. Right. So it said that we need to place grass around a two-by-two two thing of water. So let's place down one grass block, and we will place down some dirt, and then I grabbed our reinforced watering can that we got uh, a little while ago as a quest reward. I guess we should just be able to aim in the center and I'll just go. And there it is, very good. Okay, and let's remove the center blocks. Okay, so we need to fill this in full of water and unfortunately we can't just put two blocks of water in there or whatever and make an infinite spring because that is disabled in this mod pack. Uh, so let's put away the rest of our dirt and then I need to grab some more buckets. Yeah, three more should be fine. Okay, so I have been taking our leaves and I have been putting it over by our garden cloche and having the leaves turn into water and we're storing the water into an iron drum here. Yep. So we have a little bit of an automation, a little bit of water buffer. Uh, so yeah, we can take this water and then fill in the holes here. Like so. Now I did say we need to throw in a flux crystal. We don't have a flux crystal, but we can easily make one of those. And I might want to make that separately because I don't know what happens if we make the flux crystal in there, if that's going to cause any problems. So let's not do that. Uh, let me grab one bucket of water. Yeah. Okay. It also said we had to put flowers around the nether portal or I'm sorry, around the twilight portal. I, I remember that you should be able to use mushrooms, but I don't know if that's been changed. Uh, okay. Well, let me place the mushrooms there. Light must be a problem. Uh, might have to like put, oh, I thought I saw something moving. Might have to put like some blocks over it or I don't know. Hopefully those don't end up popping off if it makes new light sources nearby. I know this is really weird. Uh, still doesn't like it. There we go. Okay, so we got mushrooms all the way around. Now we need to make ourselves a flux crystal. Now we did get some charged certus. Yep. Uh, I found an ore. The ore had a weird texture on it. It looked like it was really stretched or I don't know. It was really odd looking. But yeah, anyway, we do got some charged certus quartz. We need that plus redstone plus a nether quartz. I do believe put into a puddle of water in order to make the certus or in, yeah, in order to make the flux crystal, I mean, so we do quartz, redstone, charged. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was <laughs> not going to work or not. The recipe was changed. Quest updated, fluix crystals. Wait, is it a flux crystal, not a fluix crystal? Did I misread that? Am I doing the wrong thing? And throwing a flux crystal into the water, not a fluix crystal. Flux crystal. Oh boy. Okay, so a flux crystal we can make with a destabilized redstone bucket and two diamonds. Or we can do a fluid transposer. Oh, okay. Um, yep, I totally misread that. I started into applied energistics when we didn't need it. Whoops, my mistake. Okay, so we will take uh, 10 redstone and an empty bucket. <laughs> yeah, 10 redstone and an empty bucket. And then we should be able to do this. Let's uh, grab some power from over here. Yeah, we can just place it down right here. So magma crucible plus a fluid transposer. Those are full of power already. Let's change the configuration. So we want that to output to the fluid transposer and we want that to input here. And then we'll just put in the 10 redstone like so. Okay, so while that's melting down, I will grab myself two diamonds and then we should be able to make that recipe with the one bucket and one, or one bucket and two diamonds. That way we have an extra one for later. Oop, we only got... I forgot, our diamonds are over there, aren't they? Should have grabbed the emerald and put it over here as well. Oh, well, we're always, we are still waiting for that to melt down, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. How's this, how's this doing now? Okay, we need to wait for a few more. Did this... Can I just do it like this? Can we just make this simple? There, okay. <laughs> so, fluid transposer, five molten redstone onto one diamond, or you can do the bucket, right? And then do two at a time. I think we're fine here. Okay, quest complete. Flux crystal, right. So we're supposed to drop one of those into the twilight portal or what will be the twilight portal to open it. 
So let's do that now. Let's cue that on in there. Lightning. Advancement made. Twilight Forest. Okay, and I think at this point we can remove the mushrooms around there. I don't think they have to be here anymore. They just need to be there for the initial portal opening. So go and clean up our mess that we put around here. Very good. And we will vein mine those. Okay. So yeah, we now have a twilight portal available. I don't remember the twilight portal making the nether portal sound previously. Maybe it always has, but yeah, I don't really remember that. And that might get annoying that it's right there making that sound. So we might look at moving it later. Uh, yeah, let's put that away. Cobblestone. I guess we can stick that in here. Okay, I think we are ready to go to go check out the Twilight Forest. Uh, we have decent armor. We have this thing, which we're probably going to need. We're looking for torch berries, and that's it. Whisking you off to the Twilight Forest. Well, it brought me to this screen here. Are we... I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, oh, okay, here we go, here we go. That took a little bit. So very first thing... Very, 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 very first thing. Let's put a waypoint here because we are going to lose this portal if we don't. We need this to get back. So we will call this exit. Okay, so we can see some stuff around us. There it looks like a skeleton or something that might be moving towards us. I'm not sure what's going on there. A zambi over here. No, things are just kind of like milling around. They're probably underground in a cave. Uh, That would be this. Oh, yeah, there's a hollow hill right here. Okay. Uh, so what we are looking for is a cave with some torch berries. Cicadas. Uh, all right. So we should be able to find some relatively easy around here. What is that flower? This is a trickster bloom. Yeah, so the torch berry spawning caves, they also are in the hollow hills. Pretty much, you should be able to find them practically anywhere. They're really not that difficult to find. Um, I think we will go into this cave right here and take a look. If not, we might have to go into the hollow hill, but I really, really don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, not, not my preferred idea at the moment. Uh, not until we get stronger armor, really. Okay, so this was pretty, pretty, uh, small. I was going to say close and narrow. Okay, so right there I see torch berries. I see a moonstone right here. And I see there's a chest right there. I'm not sure what that chest is. I don't recall there ever being random chests in the Twilight Forest before. Uh, let's go and mine that. Okay, so we fortune three that. We only get one moonstone. I hear a skeleton. Right there. Okay. So we're going to try to take the skeleton down real quick. Okay, so we have infinite of these uh, shurikens, so we don't have to worry about it. It's just the skeletons and the monsters have, like, so much HP. It takes so long to kill them. There we go. Okay, I don't know if these give you more with fortune or not. We got one torch berries. Okay, let me grab a block. Very good. We have two torch berries. Now, how many of those do we need? I'm not entirely sure here. Um, let's go back. What was it that we were trying to make? It was under getting foods, the market. We needed exactly one torch berries in order to proceed. So I think we're good to go. Uh, we saw a little bit of the Twilight Forest. Yeah, like I said, I'm not sure how much of the Twilight Forest I want to do until we start getting like good armor. Yeah, we're at difficulty 171. You saw how strong it was, or how hard it was to kill one single skeleton. Now imagine if we get a blighted skeleton. Imagine if we get a horde of zombies. It's not going to go well for us. Not until we can do a lot more damage and we have way better armor. So, yeah, until then, I think we're going to hold off on the whole Twilight Forest situation. All right, guys, so back here at the base, we need to grab ourselves four 10 ingots, and then we can combine that. Oh, it looks like our health went up a little bit since the last time I looked at that. Maybe something about changing dimensions, or I don't know. See some food. Does that go up anymore? No, it looks like we're stuck right there. Okay, well, that's fine. Let's take that off the bar. Okay, so we need to make ourselves a 10 gear, so let's grab our gear cast, and we will replace the ingot cast in there. 
will drop the four ingots in, which should hurt our frame rate for whatever reason until that thing goes away. Uh, yeah, and then we need to pour that out. So do one of these numbers. Okay, we got three ingots in there and done. I did rearrange this a little bit, so I have it set up. So our smart, smart output gets extracted with a hopper and the hopper goes into the chest. I did that on both sides and I got rid of the other faucet that was facing this way on this particular smeltery drain. I just think it makes it look a little bit cleaner and we didn't really need those other things. Okay, so I will swap these back so I don't accidentally make a gear next time I want to cast out a single ingot. And I think we should be pretty much good here. So we need to get ourselves four logs and three planks. And I think that's about it. All right, so let's do that. So four logs and three planks. Very good. So we should be able to craft ourselves a market. So let's do that. There it is. Okay, so going to market quest complete. Let's take a look at what we got here as far as things. Um, so this is going to give us seven levels of experience. According to our thing, we don't have any experience, and I think that's just been an ongoing bug in Minecraft when you change dimensions. It's still there, it just doesn't report you have any experience. Um, oh, wait, 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 we need to do one more thing here. We need to make ourselves a blank magic map. Now, in order to do that, we have to go kill ourselves a crow in the twilight and get ourselves a feather. Mm, let's take a look at that. Blink magic map. Yeah, we have to kill ourselves a, a a raven, I guess. Get the raven's feather, torch berry, and glowstone. We already have the extra torch berry. Maybe we should go back and try and find ourselves a raven and try and get one of those feathers. And then wrap that in paper. Not so bad. Okay, so the other quest that we completed here, uh, market. So let's go ahead and do this one. Uh, allows you to trade emeralds for crops and saplings. Right, so let's claim this. And we'll pop our loot chest, which gives us a full set of iron armor. Okay, that's not bad. We'll just go ahead and take that iron armor, as long as it's not enchanted, doesn't look like it is. Yep, and we'll just toss it in here. Uh, get some more iron out of that. I think that's probably gonna be more useful. So that gives us two blocks plus six ingots. Mm. Uh, so probably what I'd wanna do is split one of these up, get three ingots. So then we'll have three blocks in there and then just pour out all three blocks. Yeah, I think that's probably what I want to do there. Okay, so we'll let that do its thing. Uh, so the market, let's set this thing down. Probably over here by our, our area where I kind of started setting up our kitchen. Kind of makes sense. I don't know. We might set up some farming over here. I might move the garden close over here. Uh, so we'll set this guy right like so. Hello, Duncan. <laughs> You just came out of the ground, didn't you? So yeah, we looked at this thing a little bit in Project Ozone Light. You don't actually need the villager here. You can right click on the market itself and it'll still show you everything. So if you don't want to listen to the villager make sounds all the time, you can just go ahead and kill him off and you can still access everything just from this block. Okay, so we have options of seeds, we have options of saplings, and we have options of other. So this is kind of cool. Oh, that costs 64 emeralds for these things. You can spawn in a parrot. I didn't even know a parrot. Oh, yeah, that's right. Minecraft 1.12. I was like, I didn't even know parrots were in this version. Uh, let's see. Polar bears, horse, chicken, cow, pig, sheep. That's kind of cool. So if you don't want to go off and searching for your own animals, things that are rare, maybe like rabbits. Those aren't the easiest thing to find. Llamas or parrots or something. Spawn them in, use industrial for going, capture them, and spawn in more. So that would be kind of useful for later. So yeah, different seeds that are available. We should have them here. And then every type of sapling from Pam's and vanilla. I don't know if any of the forest forestry ones are going to show up. Looks like we've got nature ones in here as well. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. I like it. Awesome. So if we need any specific types of food or growable seeds or whatever, we can get it from this guy. Okay, so let's see here. I think that's probably going to do it. I was going to go back to the Twilight to go find ourselves a raven and make that map. We might look at doing that next time. But guys, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. We got some good stuff done. Yeah, we went to the Twilight Forest. I wasn't expecting to do that till a little bit later. Unfortunately, I derped a little bit, started into applied energistic stuff. But you know, it happens. It was the difference of one letter, Flux versus Fluex, right? Oh, well. Uh, anyway... That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.